Y'all ready to carry this thing? Don't know where Mr. Kenneth is. Yeah, we rolling. All right, let me get back on the right screen. As soon as it says, I believe we're alive. <laughs> let me record. Well, well, well. Hello, Mr. Charles. How are you this week? Good. Good, good, good. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Overseer and Coles. How's it going this week? It's going fabulous. Palms up. Palms up, palms <laughs> up. How about that? It's so wonderful to, to be here another week. Let me take care of some business as we get started. I know that we are live and everything, all systems are go. So we should be cooking with Crisco, as they say. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> with my country self. Well, you know, we got to pay some bills first and foremost. So we want to thank our beautiful, beautiful and dedicated sponsors, Glamour Nails over on North Capitol Street in the district. I hope by now you guys are patronizing our beautiful sponsors who help keep the mission going. Glamour Nails is at 202-750-6612. Uh, my girl, Sheila over there, tell her Miss Rhonda sent you palms up. Go get those nails there. The weather's breaking, you owe it to yourself. We've been locked down in a pandemic for so long. It's time to do something different. All righty, let's see who else we want to pay some homage to. Miss Danita's head, house of hair. Uh-oh, I need to get my tail over there. It's time to get some color in. The sun is shining, Pastor. You know how we get cute when it gets oh, yeah. warm, right? Yeah. <laughs> Danita got you and all your cuteness. Danita's 202-607-4325. Hey, Queen, thanks so much for supporting the cause and keeping the, niche, the mission funded. Guys, Support our local businesses. Support those that are supporting the community. And Lord knows they're holding it down for us. All righty, all righty. Without any further ado, I believe Waterfront Insurance Network needs to get a special shout out. They're servicing all your insurance needs, whether business, health, life, you name it. Guys, it's just to get a free quote, it's worth it. Now more than ever, we've got to protect our legacies. Give them a call, 202-487-0497. Or you can get them online at waterfrontinsurancenetwork.com. All right, all right, our cash app, our cash app for those of you out there who are interested in blessing our dear platform and helping to keep us doing the work that we're doing. Um, our cash app is palms up. The number four M I palms up four M I palms up. 4MI. Thanks so much for supporting the platform. HealthyDCandMe.org. And you know, always spell it out. A-N-D. Hey guys, hey guys, we are talking about our soldiers this entire month of April. We are uh, erasing stereotypes, Mr. Charles. And I'm so glad that you're with us today. I want to talk to you because I know the school is back in session for many. And we still got this crazy vaccination process to get through. And I, Lord, I want to hear from you, Pastor Coles. I know you got that first shot. And we're going to do an update because you know there's something in the news, word on the street. Let's just get to it. Hey, Facebook. Hey, Facebook. It's your girl and palms up. It's time to talk about our stories our way because it's Tuesday and we live. <laughs> first and foremost, first thing I want to talk about word on the street, these shootings. Pastor Coles, you know, you know, you know, you know, these guns are still going off. And I want us to talk about it on an extended after we get through these uh, word on the street topics. But I am so dismayed that these guns continue to go off. They've held uh, uh, what you call vigils. They've had uh, uh, press conferences. Um, you know, they've got that office, that new position that they've created. We got to really start, uh, you know, shutting down on these uh, uh, governmental decision makers that are not um showing any impact in the way of these shootings i mean saturday night we had two brothers in southeast gone mother say her only children said that they would take care of the community and said that she's so so disappointed that their children won't get a chance to grow up to understand the type of men that they were um and then monday night you probably heard in the news that we got two queens that are dead over in southeast we're off a of good hope road they say and then another one was injured 
Guys, these guns are still going off and we just do not understand what is all of the angst about? Why are we taking lives? What is going on? What is wrong with talking it out? What is wrong with just being frustrated and coming back and figuring it out? Why do we have to take people's lives? What is that proving? I mean, where's your heart? Where's your soul? You're taking away people's sons. You're taking away people's fathers. I mean, it's ridiculous over a beef. These people's lives are much, much more than these moments of frustration. Guys, I just need you to really be thinking about it, talking up out there, governmental officials, everybody. It's going to take all of us. These guns must stop. Our children are caught up in the midst of all of this. It must end. Guns don't kill people. People with guns kill people. And that's a problem. Everything can't be so serious that you have to take a life. Let's start looking in the mirror and being accountable. This is ridiculous. They're talking about statehood and buildings are going up and people are prospering and people are killing each other. What is going on? Enough is enough. Our children are caught in the midst of our bad decision making. We must be accountable. It cannot keep being this narrative. The guns must stop. Students in DC jail word on the street says they sue in the city. So they sue in the city because the city hasn't been providing them with any uh, educational instruction. 40 students are enrolled with, for special education services. Did you guys know that there is a special education service run in the DC jail for our uh, uh, youths? That's a wonderful idea, but apparently since the pandemic, they haven't been able to get any uh, ongoing interaction or you know how the children have been doing their in-place learning um, through the digital tablets and things, our youth in the jail haven't been able to do so. And so there's a lawsuit. And so DC public schools obviously acknowledge that they are committed to providing every student, special education students as well with a high quality education. So here we go, another DC agent failing our vulnerable citizens. What else is new? These stories are getting so old. Need I remind you that our Woodbury village tenants over in Southeast are still on their plight for justice. Don't think because we're not talking about it every week that we're not behind the scene making it happen with our feet on some people's necks. You know what it is at Carl Racing Attorney General's office. You know what it is down there at DCRA, Diallo, Gamboa, and all you other folk down there that know what it is. We plan to bring justice to these families and we're not gonna stop until we do. Council member Mendelssohn who's sitting over there coming out talking about uh, what needs to happen and what hasn't happened on your watch, sir. Mm -hmm, Mr. Trayon White still ghost over there. Are we calling you out? Palms up. It doesn't okay. make any sense that vulnerable citizens in this town can't get any justice until they go to the news media and then the news media cherry picks which stories they want to talk about. I tell you, my girl Jewel out there reached out. She wants to uh, uh, understand when we're ready to mount up. Might be time to start going and paying some of these folks some visits at the home level because it doesn't make any sense that we've got to run to the media to get folks justice. Guys, I want you to know that uh, we also are concerned about the Johnson & Johnson vaccination. We've been talking about it since, you know, we've been in this pandemic since we've been on the air. It is a personal decision whether or not you choose to get the vaccination. For those of you that have got the vaccination, like our beautiful queen overseer, Ann Coles, we're going to um, keep you guys in prayer and monitor your progress. And you guys are helping those of us that haven't had the vaccine yet um, make decisions one way or the other. But we appreciate you guys for being strong enough to share your journey and share your story, which is what Pastor Coles has agreed to do. So we're going to talk to her a little bit later on to find out where she's at in the process. But guys, this Johnson & Johnson vaccination, if you haven't heard by now, that they they have stopped it temporarily because of the links to the uh, serious blood, blood clots. Let me get that out. Blood mm -hmm. clots are a serious, serious matter. I'm going to recommend that folks, um, if you're scheduled for a Johnson & Johnson vaccination, you should call your provider or call back to where you scheduled so that you can get further understandings of how you might receive one of the other vaccinations. But as a precaution, 
they are stopping the Johnson and Johnson vaccination. So please spread the word, talk it up and let your family members and coworkers know we gotta be safe out here. Boy, I tell you, we in these streets, aren't we? And we gotta use the limited information we have. We gotta trust the folks that do this so that we can try to stay out of harm's way. CDC.gov is a good uh, reference or resource to get information to understand what the latest and greatest is. And if you're in the DC uh, metropolitan area and you have further questions about the vaccination, um, a good number that they're telling us to refer you guys to is one 363 0333. Guys, we living in some times. But let me tell you something. YouGov did a poll. <clears throat> and this is a political town. I don't know if it has anything to do with it. But YouGov says that DC is the worst place in the country based mm -hmm. on 1,211 people that were polled in March, between March 12th and March 15th. They asked 1,211 people um, which cities they thought were the best place. They compared the responses and the percentages. And yep, wouldn't you know it, DC came in last, it says. Now, it says that Alabama, Mississippi, and New Jersey join us down at the bottom. And some of the higher cities were Hawaii, Colorado, and Virginia. So let's go back for a minute. Because now all of a sudden, D.C. is the worst place to live, right? I mean, these guns are going off, no doubt. But this is my beautiful, beloved uh, city and hometown. So I just want to be real with you. If it wasn't for them fighting for statehood, if it wasn't for the fact that most of the political fights are fought here, then you know, I wonder if they give us some sort of a margin of error because of the reality that we're not an official state. We care all the weight of the uh, pol politicians and all of the po political matters. And now they're saying it's the worst place to live. And we just so happen to have number one in HIV. We got folks self-medicating. We got the guns going off. I mean, come on, guys. We don't get to have it both ways. I personally, you know, I've traveled outside of the city, outside of the country outside of the state. Um, I don't believe we're the worst, but I mean, you know, I might be a little biased because I'm ward A for life. But guys, I'm just telling you, it's not a good look to have some people in this town prospering and have other folks not prospering and then have black leadership and black folk living and sleeping like third world. So I'm just saying, we don't get to have it both ways. And this poll says that we are the worst place. So I don't know, until we see something different, I'm going to have to trust that these 1,200 people Knew a little something that I didn't know. Hey I'm, guys, hey I'm guys. Just curious. Say I'm it again. Curious. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Where did they take the poll at? I don't know. What but one area? Of things, one of the things they did say was the reality is that um, um, most people are biased to where they live, but they basically said that everyone had that same bias to be able to vote for where they're from. But the overall majority, when they compared the percentages, DC percentages were low, meaning that we didn't favor high in the poll. And I, I love your questions. We have the articles, all of what I'm speaking of is on our archives page on our healthydcandme.org. So you can catch it on our website and look at it in detail. And I mean, follow it because it's interesting. Um, but I, like you, had the same questions, Pastor. Like, what's going on that we fared last place? Like, it's bad, but it's not that bad. Hello, hello, Mr. Sequoia. How are you? And welcome. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We're giving you a moment to make sure you can hear me. I know that usually we get these all these little kinks worked out prior to, but it's okay, Mr. Sequoia Kanyas. Rhonda Hamilton, palms up, welcome. If you can hear me, th thumbs up. Uh-oh, he's still working out his communication, <laughs> but that's no problem. That's our guest this evening, and we're so excited to have him join us. Before we wrap up Word on the Street, I just wanted to send out a very heartfelt rest in peace to Mr. Earl Simmons, those of us that know him as DMX. Boy, what a talented brother. And I tell you, we all have something that we're dealing with. And if his living can be a testament of what we hear on the show, am I muted? Oh, okay, no. If his living can be a testament, sorry, of what we are uh, here in our area and in this life have been understanding about mental health is that it is an ongoing daily challenge. It's not to be for judgment. Guys, if there's someone around you that's struggling with something, keep trying, don't ever give up. Life is precious. And, and my God, if I would believe that if Mr. DMX just knew 
how much he was loved and how much he would be mourned. I believe that we probably would still be looking at that brother and talking to him because he always fought, always kept it real. And sometimes just the reality of knowing how loved you are is enough to get us over and get us through. So guys, uh, palms up. We're asking you out there tonight to share some love with your loved ones, guys. It's real in the struggle out here and that the loss is death and all life is precious. Hey guys, rest in peace to Prince Philip over in the royal world. For those of you who follow that, um, all life again is precious. He and his dear wife were married for many, many years. And so I would think if for nothing else, that gets a, a, a honorable shout out. Uh, rest in peace, dear Prince Philip. Um, what is your new norm is my next question as we get ready to talk to our dear soldier, Mr. Sequoy Conyers. Mr. Sequoy, how is your communications? Do you have it worked out? Can you hear us just fine? If so, thumbs up, palms up. Can you hear us? <laughs> Every time I ask him something, the screen goes out. <laughs> We're going to keep on going. And before I finish, did you guys know that Prince has a new album coming out in July? Am I the only one excited about that? I tell you, this is going to be interesting to hear what kind of music he was working on. And they said that he had it. Uh, uh, had it together for quite some time. So it's still going to be interesting to hear the flavor that Prince had because he always had something good. Hey guys, hey guys, it's your girl Palms Up and we've got another week of erasing stereotypes. We got our beautiful guest, Mr. Sequoia Kanye is on the uh, uh, doorstep. We see his uh, handsome face, but uh, now we've got a blank screen. So we're going to give him time to work out his communications. You know, on this platform, we are not a stranger to technical difficulties. Are we oversee a coast? No, we're not. <laughs> no. We've been making it through, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, I want to talk to you about you had your shot. Which shot did you have before? I had the Pfizer. The shot. Pfizer shot, and that yes. the Pfizer uh -huh. is the two one of the two shots, right? Yes, so it is. Uh -huh. How long are you? What day are you along in your shot in your vaccination? I'm actually in my one, two, three, my third week, and I'm scheduled your to take my week. second my second shot on the nineteenth. Wow, you take your second shot on the nineteenth. Yes. How have you been? I know last we spoke to you about we wanted to give you some time to kind of catch up to yourself. I know that you were exhausted. You were still being a superwoman. Yeah. The only thing I really heard you mention is the fatigueness in the beginning. But yeah. Um, update the, us. How have you been? I've been fine. Matter of fact, um, I went to my primary care doctor um, last week. And surprisingly enough, I've actually been suffering with bad sinuses since the virus has been out mm -hmm. and some of the pressure has actually released some of the inflammation has actually gone since I took the shot. Um, I'm, now I'm having anxiety attacks, you know, mm -hmm. that second shot. Yeah. 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 When, do, uh, when are you scheduled to take it or are you scheduled? I, I take it Monday the 19th at 9.30. Wow. Um, and my doctor and some of my friends that are in the medical field told me and make sure you get you some Tylenol before you go. Okay. okay. Um, they said I might experience the fever and flu-like symptoms after that second shot. Mm -hmm. And second shot seemed to kind of take you down a little bit. So really, I was going to ask you: Had you yeah, had there been yeah. any comparisons or communications that the second round would be any different than the first? Um, you've been such a trooper thus far. Um, Talk to us about any of your initial concerns at this point in well, the day. My initial concern was I was going to die. <laughs> I mean, I'm just um, Don't get no plainer than that. I, I I was being, you know, really sometimes getting a lot of information can be overwhelming, mm -hmm. especially when, when you're actually getting it from the medical field and being able to sit in some of the councils. Um, meeting in not just this area but mm -hmm. across the country and um hearing some of the stories uh, a lot of things is not reported mm -hmm. and is not privileged to the public and having the ability to sit in there it did bring a lot of anxiety actually Rhonda sat on the phone with me <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I went to take the shot and she could tell you I was 
Yeah. It was done. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was really breaking down. My chest got tight and yeah. I got to cry when they got ready to give me the shot. Uh, yeah, actually, I ended up with my own private EMT, a, a, a nurse and all. Mm -hmm. And they kept watch on me because my blood pressure was real high and they think some of it was because of my nervousness. Yeah, it's real um, out there. Yeah. People are still going through. I, you know, on the flip side of it is, um, I don't think that the dispensing of the shots are going as they anticipate. I was hearing, listening to something. You can go as far as Hagerstown and, and go show up and go get the shot. And I thought that was interesting because obviously they were rolling it out in phases. And so what we're understanding is that there's still large parts of those uh, populations, such as the first responders and others that have yet to take the shots. Yeah. And so they because of me, that, it's They sent me all the way to Waldorf. Yeah. And I have to be honest, the further out you go, the more pleasant the site is, mm, the, the more a, pleasant the people are. Interesting. Um, my daughter, just her and my grandson, they just took their first shot today. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, and she said, mommy, I didn't feel anything. So I talked to her, she said she's doing okay. Yeah. Um, she actually went over to the health center right there on East Capitol Street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's where they went and um, took their first shot. They were scheduled to go last week. And when they got there, they told them they didn't have any and they had to reschedule them. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. they took their first shot today. So, so mm -hmm. far they're doing good. They're doing good too. So. I'm glad to hear that. I really am. I tell you this, this uh, COVID is something else and yeah. we don't have a quite, quite have a handle on it yet. I, I'm happy to see that they're starting to uh, get checks out to folks and, and that folks are starting to find some sort of relief to a, you know, on a limited scope in terms of the financial burden. I know that the rental uh, circumstances in terms of the lifting of the uh, evictions and things of that nature, I know that that's going to send many in a tailspin. I hope that they put enough money out there for folks. Guys, if you're out there and you're listening to this broadcast and you're someone who's going through something rental wise um, and you don't have the funds or the means and you've got a landlord that's giving you a tough time, reach out. Don't go through it by yourself. We are all in this together. This is a new norm and um, we're all figuring it out. Uh, HealthyDCandMe.org spell the word and out and we will get an advocate involved to help you out. Guys, this is the day and age where everybody, everything is different everything's reset yeah. and we're all figuring it out together so we don't want you depressed we don't want you stressed we don't want you hungry we don't want you going through it let somebody know guys because now more than ever we need one another um suicide is real these guns are going yeah. off folks are frustrated um the church doors are closed um folks are not necessarily acclimated to this digital new things. So we've got to look out for folks that are out there on the community level that don't have the access that we have. Um, many folks that would love to take the shot, but don't understand how to register for it or don't understand yeah. what the protocols are. So we've got to start reaching out and helping one another. And that's what this platform is about, Palms Up. It's about the humanity mm -hmm. in us all and reminding us that it takes a village. So thanks so much for that, Overseer Ann. And we're going to be looking to keep an eye on you and watching out over you um, after you take your shot on the 19th and we're going to be praying with you that you stay healthy and we thank you for being brave enough because not everybody wants to talk about their private business <laughs> hey. so we thank you for being our experiment <laughs> <laughs> hey palms up Mr. Kenneth Clark look who made it to the platform our social justice fighter how's it going Mr. Unapologetic hey, Kenneth You've been out in that community. I want to talk to you, brother. So sit tight. It's so good to see you. Hey, Mr. Charles Carrington. Charles Carrington yes. the second, right? Yes. <laughs> How's it going, my dear Prince? Good. Good. It's so good to talk to you again. You are such a soldier out here. And I just wanted to get your perspective, see if you could represent for our youth out there, because in the midst of all of this vaccination, they talk about going back to school and having full-time classes. And, you know, I want to stop for a minute before I even come your way. 
all the way. I want to share some inf interesting information. Our government feels that our youth ages 11 years and under, our DC government, our DC council to be specific, believes that our youth ages 11 years and younger are able to make their own decisions about being vaccinated and they don't have to share that information with their parents. That's number one. Number two, I understand that Maryland has legislation that is now, if you're 12 years old or older, you can decide your level of mental health services that are needed. Um, our babies, our legislative folks feel that our babies are able to make these important decisions. Mr. Charles Carrington, Will you come forward and speak with us for a brief moment before we jump over and speak to our guests? It looks like they've been able to make it back in. Um, talk to us a little bit about going back to school. Are you back in school yet? Um, no, I was going to go back at first, but they um, started talking about the numbers started to go back up. So I said I wasn't going. So you, let me get this straight. You, young man, what age, what grade are you in? I am in the 11th grade. You're in the 11th grade. And when were you guys officially supposed to be back in school? Um, as of this, as of last Monday. As of last Monday. And you have made the responsible decision to stay out because the numbers start going back up. I mean, come on and talk to the platform. Is this something you talked to mom about? You just looked at the news on your own and decided it? What went into that decision making? How did it unfold? Um, I was, my mom had took me to the barber shop and I was listening to the news and it said the numbers were starting to go back up because people weren't wearing their masks. It's starting to get some time so a lot more people are starting to come out instead of staying in. So I said I wasn't going back, but I didn't want it risk that chance of me catching it and I did not feel like wearing the mask off so. that is such a responsible decision I just I want you to get, come close to the mic because we really want to hear what you're saying I heard you say your mom you went to the barbershop and you while at the barbershop saw on the news that the numbers were going up and you decided yes. that with you just did couldn't do it with those numbers going up and didn't want to have to wear that mask. So what is your alternative and, and what is the alternative for students that choose not to go back? Are they harassing you at all? Are they helpful? Um, I think it's safer that the kids that haven't got the shot stay home away from everybody else because truth of the matter is if you don't, if you haven't got the shot, it, you still have a greater chance because if someone has it, it'll affect you, but won't affect everybody else because they're on the um, shot. That's so responsible. Before I shift gears, I just, I want to ask you, how has it been for you um, with your learning and some of the students being in class and you not being there? How have you adjusted? Has that been a problem? Um, no, my teachers are... A, a little sad that I'm not back yet. They're trying not to show it, but I can see it. <laughs> so um, I told them that I would come back maybe in um, when it's time for summer school, once I hit the shot and stuff. Well, dear Prince Charles Carrington II, I thank you for being our updated understanding for this school situation. And I tell you, we are living in some times and that's why it's important that we talk it out. So I am so honored and proud to hear that you made an informative decision for your health. Um, and I applaud you and mom for being so frontline and forward with your communications to help other families. So palms mm -hmm. up to you beautiful people. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. No problem. <laughs> okay, palms up. Hey, hey, it's your girl. It's your girl. And as I told you all month long, we are celebrating soldiers. We are erasing stereotypes. And you know how we do it on this platform. We have technical difficulties every now and then. We have problems, but we still get this word out. Guys, we thought it was important to shine a light, light on our young uh, uh, African-American prosperous uh, businessmen in the community because not knowing their journey 
journey and not knowing their story, um, it's important to understand where they may have come from and where they are now in the journey for so many out there that are lost, so many out there that have started on a journey that may have gotten uh, uh, discouraged, that may be living rough lives, that may be living in some times and just don't know what to do or how to do it. What we try to do is to show you that we're all in this together and we can all choose to do something different. It's that simple. You can choose to do something different. Taking a life is just not where it's at. And we're asking you guys to put those guns down and to be about something. We're going to bring folks before you as many as we need to, to help you find yourself, find your purpose and find your heart. God bless you. Hey, Mr. Sequoia Kanyas, welcome to the Palms Up platform. I saw that mute go off. That means we got a clean connection, brother. Welcome. Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you just fine. Your visibility goes in and out, but I hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm, I'm talking to you in the attic. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, we do a cell phone commercial. <laughs> I, I had uh, a, a, a couple of my employees need me, you know, need my help today. So I was out here, had to come out here and help them. And, you know, excuse me, you know, as far as uh, the communication, you know, I try, I try to uh, hit you on the phone as far as on the Zoom. Uh, but I don't, I don't know exactly what happened to that. So I, I had to call you in on the customer phone. Oh, well, not on the customer phone. I appreciate that. On the that. customer phone. <laughs> I appreciate that. Please, I said, please call it. <laughs> Wait, we got you. We holding you down. And just so you know, in the future, this is not going to be your first visit to the platform. We thank you for uh, making it and making it a dedication to be here. We just wanted to shout you out and, and show some love. And, and rightfully so. You out there in the community working and you still coming, making an effort to get back to the platform. So we're not going to keep you long, but we do want to keep you long enough to give you some glory. Uh, Mr. Sequoia Conyers, will you tell us what it is that you do in the community, number one, how we can get in touch with you, number two, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your journey, if that's okay. Sure, sure. Uh, number one, uh, my name is Sequoia Conyers. As far as me, uh, I've I, I been uh, in the HVAC field over 23 years now. I've uh, been very successful in the field. So uh, when I was 23 years old, I say in the future, I want to open up my school. So I just opened up my school last November in 4584 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland. Awesome. And uh, my third class coming up. And uh, it's, just, it, it's been very, very blessful awesome. to see young men and women into the school and, and really want to change their lives as far as getting off the street. Yes. So it's, it's just been, I mean, it's, 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 it's a purpose, you know. It's just been a big blessing that I could give back to the community. So, that is I mean, a blessing. It's, I want to so stop, stop you a minute because I you stumbled into something. I didn't realize you had a school. I want to give that some props. Palms oh, up. Yeah, I have, I have, yep, I, I have a school on 4584 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland, right in our community. So it's for our community. And I, I looked at, I had a division. They took away all the trade schools and all the, uh, uh, you know, uh, early summer jobs and stuff for our youth. And mm -hmm. so I say, you know, let me do my part. You know, I'm coming from D.C., Southeast, born and raised. Let me do my part as far as helping my community and bring them to a field and a career where as though it could take, it, it could take them, I, I, I mean, you know, far as their minds off the street Absolutely. and want to do the right thing and pass the information on to their friends and family Absolutely. and let them, you know, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is my third class coming in right now on uh, April the 26th, mm -hmm. and that's what been, that's, that's what been going on right now. Uh, they've been letting their friends know and, and you know, uh, family members and the ages I've been getting is, it's from 20 to 35. So it's, it's just a blessing that... 20 to 35? 
Yes, twenty years old. I mean, the age is is is, is far, and uh, you could be eighteen years old. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know, to come to class, uh, okay. you know, you could be eighteen. Is there but, any prerequisites, Sequoia, to join the class? What do they have to do to join the class? Uh, only thing they need is is a high school diploma, and that's it. I I, I don't look at no records, or what they've been through in life. I don't look at none of that because at the end of the day. I'm going to change their life, you know, man, the most high. We're going, you know, we're working together to make, make, you know, make some out of it, you know. So, you know, they just have to be 18 years old with a high school diploma. If they don't have the high school diploma, I mean, we're we, we going to work some out with that also. But, you know, it, it, the whole thing is, I don't, if, if, if the opportunity is they want to come in and learn, I'm going to let them come in and learn. Okay. Okay. Is it a fee? And how long is the class? The class is an eight weeks program. Uh, after the eight weeks, you get your certification, the same certification that you would get of any college, any institution out here, uh, a CFC university certification. Uh, if you go to Lincoln Tech, it's the same certification that Lincoln Tech issue out. Uh, the, the, the difference between me and Lincoln Tech that you know they charge it twenty six thousand dollars. <laughs> it's, it, it's only you know they 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 gonna give you all book work. I don't, I, I only charge thirty five hundred with a payment plan, and I'm gonna give you all hands on. And after, if I see you come to class on time, and you you know your work ethic is good, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you on a, on a, on the payroll. I love you. Thank you for what you and, do. And, and not even that. Uh huh. Uh, it's going to be on, you know, on on job training uh, mm -hmm. while you're in class. It's going to be on job training, and then once you leave the class, my number is right here. You can call me anytime you want if okay. you need my help. Anything you need, you need to come at the class and get more experience. The doors is wide open for everyone. That is so beautiful. I want to recap just to make sure I got it all down. Over at 4584 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland, Mr. Sequoia Kanye is our beautiful guest this evening, who I'm going to find out a little more about his background, is out here doing God's work. You heard him, right? You heard him say it. You only have to be 18 years of age. Um, and even if you don't have your high school diploma, he said he's he going to talk to you and try to work it out with you. But the reality is that you can take an eight week course in HVAC. I'm going to have Mr. Conyers break it down and talk to us about what is specifically HVAC covers. Um, but basically, it's a $3,500 fee for what you would pay $20,000 plus over at Lincoln Tech. And you get your certifications once you pass the class. Um, they've got a class coming up on April the 26th. We're going to make sure that we're posting about this all the way up to the 26th. We got a lot of 18 year olds out there that need to know about this. Palms up. Thank you, brother. Talk to us a little bit more. How did you get into the HVAC field, and what exactly is HVAC for those of us that don't know? Okay, so uh, uh, HVAC is a HVAC heating, ventilation, uh, uh, air conditioning. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so uh, we do heating, AC. If you you know, far as uh, residential and commercial. If if you if your system go out, we'll be the ones that come to fix it. If your heat go out in the winter, we'll be the ones that come and fix it. In the summer, if your AC goes out, we'll be the ones that fix it or replace it. So, you know, just to give you a little idea of it. Um, and, and also, uh, we do uh, duct cleaning and mold uh, remediation. Mold testing and mold cleaning. Um, as far as my company, uh, and uh, I mean, it's, it's basically it. But uh, I've been doing it since I was 22 years old. How did you and, get uh, into it? What, 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 what? what? Oh, 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 the way I got into it was uh, I bought a house at 20, and <laughs> a, a brand new house at 20, Go on and. Now. And and, and 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 one time I went out of time and came back home, and my AC went out, mm -hmm. and there was distortion hot in the house. So I ain't know who to call. I called Sears. They came out, 
the guy charged, you know, he gave me an estimate, mm-hmm. say twenty thousand dollars. He mm-hmm. told me twenty thousand mm-hmm. so dollars. I say, what? Mm. I need to learn this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, I mean, yes. I mean, this put down a bottle house. So I need to learn this. So, so he told me the to school. I went to Lincoln Tech, mm-hmm. and when I went to Lincoln Tech, I went for a year, and I had I I didn't learn anything but this book. I'm not a book nerdist person. I'm my hands on, and okay. you know I have to use my hands. That's how I learn. You know, I, 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 only way I can learn is if I touch it and I see it. So I went to Lincoln Tech for a year, had to pay. It was uh, back then ten thousand dollars, but now it's twenty, mm-hmm. I'm saying twenty five thousand right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I left Lincoln Tech, I still didn't have the hands on nerd. So. I went to a school named All State Career in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. I went there for a year, and they they gave me the same uh, thing that Lincoln Tech gave me, book nodded. So I said, you know what? No prom. <laughs> I, I, I went home. Uh-huh. I ordered a whole AC system. I put it in my garage, and I was in my garage every day like somebody was in the gym every day. And I worked. Sense. And I worked on it. I worked on it. I, 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 I YouTube and I worked on it. And next thing I know, I became a master HVAC technician with a master license. I'm so. Uh, I want you to take a break for a minute because I just want to shout out and let our Facebook audience and our wonderful, beautiful uh, folks here on our Zoom audience uh, just applaud your effort. I mean, first and foremost, brothers, I heard you mention that you're out of Southeast. Um, I heard you mention that you purchased a home at 22. I mean, you just been out the gate and making stuff happen. Who in your life has planted this level of, of seed or direction or obedience? I got some brothers out there, some youth out there that need to understand this. What happened? When did you get on track and when did you know? Uh, I mean, well, it was, um, well, basically, I mean, I, I just knew, uh, you talking about far as me starting my business or the school? Well, yeah, just getting on track, just deciding you were going to be successful because uh, not every 22-year-old okay. wakes up and talk about buying a house. <laughs> Out okay, of well, I mean, I, I, I always had a great dad, you know, even okay. though he was he was okay. from Sophie's also, but he was he was a great pusher, a great father to, you know, to us, uh, you know, uh, me and my siblings, uh, it, it was three of us, two girls, I'm the only boy, I'm the youngest, and, you know, my mom, so when they separated, you know, we we, we, we lived in Southeast, uh, Langston Lane, then we left Langston Lane, living in the Poland, so uh, after uh, 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 my nephew, we was a year apart, so when he got killed, and then I just say, you know, I got to change my life, you know, mm-hmm. because he was, I mean, I was in the streets and he was looking up to me and fathered me and, and you know, I felt like by him looking up to me, got him killed. And, and, and I just, you know, did, did a whole 360. I mm-hmm. say, let me move away from Southeast, let me go to Maryland and get my mind right because I'm I, I'm the king of my family. I'm oh, the only uh-huh. boy. So awesome. so let me uh <clears throat> You just said some powerful words there. I thank you for taking and making the extra effort to be on the show tonight. April is all about you, brother, and brothers like you out in our community. I get so emotional because I travel in so many circles, and they would have us to believe that our brothers coming out of Southeast are menaces, that our brothers coming out of Southeast can't have direction or obedience and wake up one day and recognize that there's something that could be done. The reason we keep putting this message out here, because if we save one soul, if we save one life, it's worth it. And Mr. Conyers, you just just made it so, you just validated that, that it's possible. And I just, again, I can't thank you enough, palms up, brother, to you for being out there and, and seeing the air of your ways and decided that you were a role model on this local level and that you could do something greater and bigger for the greater good. And, and you're out there educating our brothers to learn about HVAC. And let's be real. I'm a former real estate broker. That, that's some career-minded stuff. Um, you can take care of a family with an HVAC career. And, and I mean, yep. you opening up the door for self-employment. 
um, so that folks don't have to work for one another. I see my brothers. I'm just going to keep it 100. You know what I'm talking about, uh, Sequoia. I see my brothers out on the corner, and a lot of times they're not necessarily working for themselves. They're working for somebody else, and they're dealing with a lot of uh, drama as a result of that. Guys, we got to put these guns down, and we got to get in these circles and get folks around us that are uh, progressively in their mind and in their thinking. Sequoia, I thank you. I want to ask you a couple of questions because there's a brother out there. There's a mother of a brother out there that sees themselves in you and, and you're going to save somebody tonight. I just know you will um, as you've been doing every day with your beautiful uh, work that you do. Has being a Black man, in your opinion, impacted your decisions for being successful? Um, has it contributed in a negative way? for you trying to do what you had to do or has it hindered? Have you felt like, oh, being a black man, have you had any issue? I'm just asking that question really because I got brothers out there that feel like the deck is stacked against them. They feel that society uses our women against them and that every turn that they make, they're, they're never gonna win. Um, has Have you felt that way? And if so, can you give some words of enlightenment for a brother that may be going through out there and trying to make a decision to change their life? Sure, sure. Uh, as far as living as a black man, it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> I, it, I mean, but you just have to navigate through all, you know, through all the nonsense. You know, you just have to navigate. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, when I try to open up the school, I named it a school, and they would not let me. Uh, it, 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 the paperwork, you know, they it was just so much with it, a lot of politics with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you just have to navigate through it. So when I navigate through it, I say, let me change it to Sequoia Community Learning Center. Once I did that, now I got full control of everything, you know. But when I say school, now they, the politics start, you know, coming in. Mm -hmm. They want they want to uh, send inspectors out there. Mm -hmm. They want this. Mm -hmm. So so I said, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 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 let me stop here because I need this all to myself because I want to give a lot back to my community. Mm -hmm. If if I allow y'all to be a part of this, mm -hmm. then it's not... It, 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 Preach, brother. I can't, Preach. I, can't, I, can't, I can't do everything that I want to do of what I plan to do. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. named it, I named it a community learning center to get away for the politician. Hey. So only, mm -hmm. only thing you have to do, it is, I mean, it is rough on a black man out here, mm -hmm. but you just have to navigate. You have uh -huh. to navigate. If if mm -hmm. one door is closed, you got to go the other okay, road. And you keep going. And I don't want you to keep going. away from that us. That door I closed, you got to go the other road. Yeah, that's that's the right. way I've been going all my life. I so, love it. I love so, it. So, but being a black man is beautiful because at the end of the day, it started with us. That's it right. With, that's right. It started with us. So that's right. we just we just had you we just got to know how to maneuver there and not so we have to thank you for that hey I want to open it up because I got some beautiful queens on this phone that well, I know uh, they want I'm going to say one more thing go ahead Go ahead. I want y'all to come out to my school so y'all can uh, survey it and, 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 and see exactly what I'm doing for our community please awesome. come out please awesome. each but one of y'all please come out is uh the next class gonna start April the sixth. It's a big class. I got fifteen people. I started with eight. The first class with eight. Second class with twelve. Class. Okay. I think fifteen. So well, I tell you what we're gonna do. We gonna make it our business to come out, Mr. Kenneth Clark. I know he's listening. He's our community correspondent. If you would allow us to come out, we'd love to come out there and catch you for your please, first week. Please, I'm bad. I'm bad. Look. Okay. I'm begging y'all to come okay, out. Please come. Coming. We coming, brother. That's our word. Palms up. We're going to come do a segment on watching those brothers coming in, those sisters, those young 
you trying to get some knowledge. I love what you're doing. Hey, two things you touched on. And before I get you out of here, I want to ask you about building a legacy because you're such a sharp brother. And I know that they're my uh, folk in the audience. They see themselves in you um, or they hear their conversation coming out of your mouth. We all lived a certain way coming out of Southeast and coming through. And then we get to a point in our lives where we have to shift gears and do something different. And my brother Sequoia Conyers is on the phone, uh, our very own Baloo Knight alumni on the call, letting us know that when he saw his young family member looking up to his ways, he saw that he needed to change the air of his ways for the better. Now he's over in Temple Hills uh, offering HVAC classes to the community. 3,500 is not a big fee at all for a career changer. Hey guys, you can do it. We are erasing stereotypes. Um, you touched on two things. You said when you mentioned the word school that they came yeah. at you. I tell you two things as a, as a population we got to pay attention to in this dear, lovely America of ours, the media and education and, and Black better believe they're going to send everything they got to check us out because that's just the reality mm -hmm. of the politics. So brother, you are woke and I can't wait to send more folks your way. I can't wait to come and do the segment over there at your school in Temple Hills. Talk to us before you get away from us about building a legacy. That's something I've been trying to impart with our young brothers out there in the street. What does it mean to you to build a legacy and what should it mean to our brothers from your opinion? Building a legacy, on, on, on my point of view, of of um, is uh, me. Can you hear me? I hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay. This this is this is a legacy right here for me. <laughs> yeah, and, that's right. And 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 and, and, and it could be, I mean, for all of us. My legacy is this, is to have the school, I'm, I'm, I'm going to train, I'm going to teach, mm -hmm. and I'm going to employ so many brothers and sisters. We're going to get together, and we're going to put our money together and buy acres of land, and we're going to build our own farm and our own community. That's Come the legacy. Come on now. You heard it first here on Palms Up. That's right. Mr. Sequoia Kanye is coming out of D.C. Southeast to be exact. Balloon alumni on the call telling us about how he bought a house at 22, how he changed the air of his ways and how he's out there educating the community in the beautiful career of HVAC. Hey guys, if you got babies out there that are lost, young brothers, if you got uh, something you need to do in this life and you still wondering if you can or not, it's soldiers like Savoy Conyers that you should be looking to, to talk to, to figure it out, be around. Success leaves clues, guys. I love this. Palms up to you, dear brother Sequoia Conyers. Could you please give us some contact information how do we get in touch with you, brother? Yes, uh, my name is Sequoia Conyers. The contact number is 301-343-3228. 301-343-3228. My email is Sequoia HVAC, HVAC44 at gmail.com. My website of the this, of this school is... Uh, <clears throat> Hold on one second. Oh, you got time. You got time, soldier. <laughs> I'm loving uh, it. It's, it's uh, it's S. Hold on a minute. Hold on. I need y'all to know this. He's talking to Sequoia Conyers. He's getting us his website for his HVAC school. He's out here doing the darn thing. Don't let nobody tell you because you're from Ward A to Southeast that you can't make it happen. We out here in these streets. Believe that. Yes. The, uh... Okay, the website is www.sequoyclc.com. Uh, you can look that up, and you can see my school. Awesome. And also, mm -hmm. you can reach me on Facebook at Sequoy Conyers on Facebook. But as far as my, uh, my website for the school, www.sequoyclc.com. 
That's awesome, Sequoia. Thanks so much. We're going to be repping you and tagging you. We're coming over to that beautiful school. I'm going to reach out to you in the background one of these weeks um, in May. We're going to come over and check in right after you guys get checked in with your first class. Hey, hey, my beautiful panel out here. I want to open it up before we get out of here and allow you guys to just chime in. We've got so much going on. I'll allow you guys to speak on any one of the word on the street topics or anything that you want to bring to the platform. We talked about the J&J &J vaccination being and stop because of the blood clots? Are you someone out there that's concerned about this vaccination? Do you have something that you want to impart? Hey, Mr. Kenneth Clark, I know that these guns are still going off. We lost two more brothers over in uh, Southeast and then what, three more, uh, what, two shot? No, let me say it again. Two women were dead over Good Hope and then another one injured, nonetheless from gunshots. And so I know that we have a lot still going on in this community around us. Um, we got beautiful soldiers out here that are doing the darn thing. Um, does anybody want to weigh in? Miss Renee Harris, welcome to the platform. Miss Yolanda Green Wilson, thank you so much for the support. Overseer Anne's, um, guys, unmute. Let's let's share this last little uh, five minutes of conversation amongst one another. There's a lot going on in the community. Does anybody have anything they want to say to Mr. Conyers? What a wonderful. I got person. a question for Conyers. Hey, it's the core. Yes. yes. Thank you for delivering. I appreciate you. Um, you when you first bought your when you first bought your first house, who taught you about financial literacy? Well, I think it just came from uh, uh, my dad. Uh, he was an entrepreneur, and um, just watching him, you know, and I just you know just picked up a lot of great information and this a lot of skills from him as far as uh real estate and things like that so you know i always want to be like my dad you know he was awesome. very successful awesome. and he was a businessman a boss a big boss a king so i just wanted to just be you know like him so i just bought my house and at at, at 22 22 years old and, and, and we're so crazy. Uh, I, I I never imagined I could uh, purchase a house that cost me nine hundred eighty thousand dollars. But the time I had my own dump truck company also. So <laughs> you've been making moves. I love it. I love it. You know, you said something that's so instrumental. Hold tight, Miss Hata. I'm sorry. I just have to point this stuff out because, you know, as a community, we don't always take a minute and we promise from seven to eight every week, we taking a minute because this is what it's about. He said, I just wanted to be like my dad. Guys, in those communities where we got our broken families, our brothers, when you keep talking about we don't need you, we can't do this without you. Did you just hear my successful soldier say that everything, everything motivationally was about having that father figure that he wanted to be like? Guys, you can change a young soldier's life just by being there and, and just being present and doing the types of things that they would want to mimic. That You said a mouthful, Sequoia. Thanks so much. Ms. Hightower, you had something else you wanted to say? Okay. Um, my last question, Sister Coy, is if you had a son and in these times and days of age, what would be your wisdom to him to survive in these streets? Uh, well, I, I, I did wish I had a son when my daughter was born. I, I wish she was a son, but uh, I, I had one daughter. So if I had a son in these days of time, um, I, w I mean, when we was growing up, we had, like, OGs, and, you know, we had support. These days right here, there's no, it's no brother support. You know, there's it, it, no support for the youngest. So, I mean, what I would say is that uh, if I had a son, I would definitely... Uh, you know, just train him. I train him. I mean, mm -hmm. I would have to train him to, to be the best, and you know, train him for respect, and just just keep him with me at all times. Uh, because a mother can't raise a boy; she she can't. You know, only 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 a man could do that. So if 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 the dad's not around now and become a big brother, or or you know somebody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that you know that 
that could take that place and see that's where I come in at right now, you okay. know, because I see what they need and what's lost right now. They like they don't have that big brother like we had when we was young. That's they don't right. have that OG, but like, no, that's don't, right. no, nah, listen, I want you to go to school and I want you to, you know, uh, do the right thing. Do not be in the street, blah, blah, blah. They don't have that no more. That's Only right. thing they have right now is just, uh, they got judgment. The mother, the mother trying to do mm -hmm. the best she can, mm -hmm. you know. And like I say, a mother cannot raise a man. Come on now, come on. Do it. So, you know, we have to step in. Like we, we, we can't just be like, man, he just look. I'm not worrying up, you know. Right. He's too wild. See, nope. I don't look at that because he's too right. wild. I look at you know like when I hear he you know he wild he rough. That's the one I need. That's the one you need want to put. That's right. That's the reality. Well, that's right. He, 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 he just need our manly love. That's it. Come on now. Everybody. He need a real, a real G. Like, man, look, bro, I love you, man. Come on you, now. Right? Come on, McCoy Kanye's on this Palms Up platform. Oh, all this knowledge. That's all they need is that <laughs> real G. That's right. They look that's right. It's yeah. a better man. They love him. That's it. Well, and once you say you that, it's gonna go in their spirit. It, it, it's gonna go in their blood and their strength. Trust me. That's and right. And we just have to stay on them. That's it. That's, I, that's hey, all. Boy, that's all it is. The court, but I, see, we, see, we don't do that because a lot of men out here they so soft. Women taking care of. They. It, it, I, I mean. So I, I mean I just I want to be real. Where they at? Where they at? So, I, I just want to be real tonight. You know what I'm saying? You know, but, uh, you know we don't do nothing else but keep it 100. Look, you know I got to give you a two-part so, series. Look, Sakoi, we're going to come over to you and we're going to get you to keep talking to us. And, brother, we're going to keep you on our platform on a regular because you have his neighbor minds and touching souls, and we need to be supporting what you're doing. Um, palms up, brother, to you is all I can say. Palms up. Thank you so I, much. I, I, I just want to say fly. one main thing. I, I, I want to share this with y'all, right? Go ahead. Court, right? Go ahead. I got two young brothers that just graduate. The graduation was the other day for my class. I had two young brothers. Somebody sent them to me, and they told me they was out here killing, right? Hmm. But they just told me that. Mm -hmm. Do you know the same two young brothers came to me and hugged me the same Come on time? Now. And Come we all was crying Come together. On now. Yes. You know we what? And this. they working for me today. And we they work right this. now. See, and God been blessed this. me with more work because yes. of this. Yes, brother. Come the same brother. two brothers yes. out here killing. I, I ain't say nothing to them. The person who, who sent them to me, you know, told me about everything. I said, no problem. I got him, man. He said, do something with him. I got him. The same two young and when they graduated, they came and hugged me. We all hugged each other. All and, man, we just crying like babies. And they working for me today. And they say, man, thank you so much. You changed our lives, man. Hey, Sequoy, now what we got to do, we break the cycles, but now we got to hold those soldiers in place so they can go and know the importance of giving back to the next oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 so crazy. Yeah. They told their friends, and yeah. now they they, right. it's full of their friends right. coming to the next class. That's right. Hey, Sequoy. I'm going to tell you why I get so, I get so excited because quite has kept on in the insurance business. So I, I know what it's all about. Once these brothers get infected with making their own money and making good money and earning yeah. it and being able to hold their head up, that's what I'm about. I'm about trying to save some souls. But hey, brother, we coming exactly. back for part yeah. two. Coming back for part I just, two. I just, I just need y'all support because I got, got it. it. I know. I know. I, I, like I say, I'm from you the hood. It know how yeah. to, you yeah. know, to gravitate with these youngins. Yes. I, I know what to do, I, but I, I can't I'm do gonna, it by myself. I just need that support. 
Oh, you got it, brother. And I'm going to introduce you to someone special in my life, my dear uh, godfather, who was uh, one of the heads down at WSSC, who just recently retired. So he's big in that contractor apprentice world. So I know he loves hearing that you're doing this work and he's about the community. He's a, a DC soldier for life. So uh, we're going to talk, brother, behind the scene. We definitely going to support what you're doing. Hey, Facebook. Hey, Facebook. It's your girl. And as usual, we ain't got no rules over here. We all over the place. Palms up. It's how we do. It's how we do. We had to make sure that we got another wonderful word to you this week. We thank our beautiful, beautiful members in the audience for tuning in. We thank our Facebook family for always supporting the platform. Guys, we're erasing stereotypes the entire month of April. We are all we got. We are all we need, Mr. Kenneth Croft, Mr. Jojo Rose out there, and all our other beautiful activists out there. Mr. Sequoia Conyers is our guest this week. And if you didn't know, you better ask somebody coming straight out of Southeast with all this wisdom and all this knowledge. Guys, we're going to be posting Sequoia's information on our website, on our Facebook Live. We're going to be going over to visit his class over in Temple Hills. Guys, if you heard anything tonight and didn't get a chance to write it down quick enough or you're telling somebody and you forgot, just contact us at the Palms Up platform. We're going to make sure you get in touch with Mr. Sequoia Conyers. Also, our beautiful kings last week, Mr. Saladin Simmons and Mr. Ronald Rashad Jackson. Uh, Mr. Jackson, I know you're on Facebook. Mr. Saladin Simmons, I know your uh, uh, website. We're going to be posting all that beautiful information. These are our soldiers out here, guys. When they keep talking about black this and black that and, and, and how we are not capable, guys, I want you to remember beautiful souls like Mr. Sequoy Conyers, Mr. Ronald Rashad Jackson, and Mr. Saladin Simmons out here making a difference every day. We can stop these guns, but we need to take the politics out of it and get back to being genuinely involved and start saving souls. God bless you guys for tuning in another week. Our Palms uh, Cash App app, here we go, talk too much. Our Cash App is Palms Up, the number four MI. Palms Up, the number four MI. Thanks to all our beautiful sponsors, our beautiful Glamour Nails over there in DC and our Danita's House of Hair. Thank you guys for supporting the platform. Palms up. We did it another week. Hey, Mr. Sequoy Conyers, I can't say it enough. Thanks what you're doing out there, brother. We coming your way and we're going to be repping you the rest of the month and the rest of our days. We're so proud of you and we're so proud you're one of ours, brother. Thank you. And please thank your customers. <laughs> sure, sure. Thank you. All right, hey, guys, Facebook, we're out of here. If you need your HVAC done, call Mr. Sequoy Conyers. Rep Sequoy Conyers represent our own guys we're going to put it on our website we're going to make sure you have all this information palms up out there thanks for tuning in another wonderful soldier coming to you next week god bless god bless thank, thank you, you.